very uh, brief uh, introduction and then I'll give uh, the floor to, to our good uh, friend and colleague, uh, Alex Saliba, who is hosting us today. Thank you very much, Alex, for, for hosting us. So, um, well, welcome everyone to the European Parliament, also to the 11 people that are following us online. I'm sure they will, uh, they will grow uh, by numbers in a, in a, few, in a few minutes. Um, today we are here to discuss something that I think is going to be extremely interesting, has been already very interesting. I was talking earlier with our colleague from the European Commission, has <laughs> been quite uh, a challenge, but it's going to be a great opportunity in the upcoming years uh, for the European Union and the consumers in the European Union. We're talking today about the EU Common Charger, and we, titled, we subtitled this event together with Alex, uh, a new reality that will save us millions. Hopefully will save us millions according to how much we spend every time we need to change the charger, but also will save us millions in mental health when we do not find the right charger and we're looking everywhere in our homes uh, under the bed to find the right uh, cable to charge our phone. Uh, so my name is uh, Alessandro uh, Darold. I will be uh, moderating and facilitating today's uh, uh, session. By all means, at any time you have a question, just raise your hand. This goes for everyone. Let's make it interactive. And let's have a, 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 good, a good conversation, uh, both uh, uh, here and online. Um, there is one thing that I would like to say before I give the floor to Alex, and then we will uh, present all the other speakers and we'll dive into the conversation. Um, I have the feeling that every time we speak about what the European Union does, um, especially at home with our families and friends, so people that are not used to the Brussels bubble, let's say, a lot of times they ask us, like, so what concretely do you do? What do you do concretely? What, like, what's your work? And we have a hard time, you know, explaining to them that we're discussing about the 4% of platinum inside of a battery car or something, you know, like extremely, uh, not, not, not extremely concrete. There are a few things that are very, very concrete, though, and that change people's lives. If I ask my grandmother what she remembers now of the European Union, she tells me she's fairly young, so she's uh, uh, digitally <laughs> skilled. She tells me that now when she has to go to uh, visit uh, her, her grandson, she doesn't have to turn off her mobile anymore when she travels to another country because roaming is now not active anymore. Like we don't pay charges on that. And that's something extremely concrete. And I have the feeling that with this specific uh, uh, piece of legislation, Alex, uh, and all of you that have worked on it, you really are doing something that people will remember are something that we can concretely do to, to make the lives of the citizens better. So with this, uh, uh, without further ado, I would like to give the uh, opening words to Alex Saliba, who's the lead rapporteur on this file uh, for his remarks, and then we will dive uh, to the good conversation afterward. Thank you very much, Alex. Thanks a lot, Alessandro, and thanks also for joining us uh, today, today for this event, as Alessandro ri rightly pointed out, I think that the relevance in this proposal is that, first of all, we're not going to uh, change, change the world with this proposal. But at the same time, I think that we are going to leave a tangible impact when it comes to our consumers, when it comes to our environment. And one of the biggest challenges, as also has been highlighted in the introductory remarks, is that many times the biggest challenge that we face as members of the European Parliament, as direct representatives of our citizens, is the fact that we have to explain in a tangible way what we are doing. And some, in many occasions, the biggest difficulty is to try to explain very um, complex from a technical point of view, issues in a tangible way whereby consumers, users, our citizens will tell you, ah, okay, so we're going, this is going to improve the quality of, uh, of my life. This is going to improve my income. This is going to improve uh, my, my rights as a consumer in this case. And the issue of the common charger, when during the very start of this legislature as a European Parliament, we continue to push forward because we have we had been discussing the concept of a common charger for more than 10 years uh, around 13 years ago now if i'm not mistaken we started from the concept of an agreement not a legally binding agreement between um, those producers who were targeting the internal market with not smartphones that time but mobile phones um, to end up with having one common charger for 
mobile phones. Technology continued to evolve from mobile phones, which were basically one of the few, if not the only, um, uh, technological equipment which was portable, which needed this charging to be done on a daily basis. We ended up living in a reality of having so many different products from earbuds, tablets, laptops, e-readers, uh, portable keyboards, portable speakers, portable mice, um, portable he headphones, or all headphones are portable. So we ended up with a long list of devices that we use on a daily basis requiring charging um, very frequently, if not on a daily basis, um, on a weekly one or um, which require charging frequently. And therefore, our citizens, when we started to push again forward this idea during this legislature, were telling us this is a topic that you have been discussing for 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, but ultimately we are not seeing any tangible results uh, although there were tangible results because 13 years ago we had 33, if I'm not mistaken, different chargers for mobile phones. Now we ended up with a situation of uh, three uh, different charging uh, chargers for um, smartphones. When the commission uh, published its its proposal, um, it was it was. Uh, very good news for the European Parliament because ultimately now we had something which was tangible, uh, where we can where we can tackle not only smartphones but a wider category of products. But the European Parliament pushed for more ambition. Uh, we pushed for more ambition to have more devices. We pushed for more ambition to do it right because we had been waiting for 13 years to have this this common charger. And if we lost the opportunity to end up with a situation whereby, whereby we covered the biggest amount of categories of products and also to have a legislation which will withstand time because we know that we, here we are not dealing with small brands. We are dealing with some of the biggest brands that there are out there, biggest companies that there are, that there are out there, which are making big millions every year from proprietary charging solutions. Therefore, we had to do a piece of legislation, and I think that today we will be having the opportunity also to deal with how important it was to have um, a strong le legislation, not to leave any windows open uh, for, these, for these big companies, because we would have lost our basis more with our consumers if we ended up putting on the table a legislation which was... Um, uh, reported which so with so much prevalence throughout not only throughout Europe but throughout throughout the world. And then when it will come into force next year, we would end up with a situation whereby these big brands will still find a loophole um, to still be able to promote their proprietary charging solutions. So right now we're hearing a lot about rumors with the new uh, Apple Apple smartphone. We tried within the internal market committee to have an open meeting directly with Apple to explain if th these are only rumors or if this is something which is tangible. If they want um, to restrict fast charging only for, um, uh, for chargers which are approved by their system, which goes directly against um, the revision of the radio equipment directive and the common charger provisions, because here we are not dealing only with the charger, but we are dealing also with the accessories um, of the charger. And we are also dealing with fast charging directly, which is also standardized by this legislation. Therefore, we had to do it right. Um, uh, so basically, this is a proposal. This is a legislation which will be targeting not only smartphones, but a wide array of products. Um, it would benefit the consumers because we are starting for the first time to give an option to consumers to make the sustainable choice. Therefore, we are not telling consumers that you are being forced to buy a device without a charger. But what we are telling consumers is if you already have a charger at home, if you have a drawer full of chargers at home and you don't know exactly what uh, you can do with this drawer full of chargers today, 
you will have the option of buying a device without a charger. Or if you don't have a charger, buy a device together with a charger and pay a different price accordingly. With this legislation, we are also guiding our consumers. Again, the issue of letting consumers do the sustainable choice. If we ended up putting on the market a common charger without guiding our consumers to make the right choice, and this was one of the elements that was very clear also from the impact assessment of the commission before it proposed the legislation, that if you don't guide the consumers to, to make the right choice, the sustainable choice, if I'm not mistaken, there were around 80% of consumers which would have, have opted automatically to have a charger bundled with the device. Why? Because of fear of uh, destroying the device, because the charger would not be compatible, because the issue of fast charging, because of the... Um, um, how consumers were basically accustomed uh, to when they were buying uh, their devices. Therefore, therefore, we need, apart from the common charger, for the common charger to be a reality and to leave the positive impact on consumer rights and also the environment, we needed to build this ecosystem whereby consumers will be guided, not forced, to make the sustainable choice. Therefore, we have information requirements, pictograms, which in, in an easy way consumers can make their choice, see if the charger that they have at home is compatible or not with the device that they're going to buy in an easy way. Because ultimately, uh, we didn't want to have this in, 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 in very technical information, which consumers will not be able to read and understand. Um, another I believe important element of this proposal is also another window which we wanted to close down, which was uh, the issue of wireless charging. If we ended up in a situation whereby we would be regulating again after 13 years, and again, let's see the impact also on how consumers will perceive the European Parliament and the European Union per se. If we ended up going in the direction of regulating only wired technology and um, basically not tackling at all the issue of wireless technology and technology is also going in that direction because ultimately if you look at charging protocols and also products which are being put on the market uh, imagine for example if the common charger will come into force in 2024 um, okay we always use the Apple example, but that is the elephant in the room. Um, and the new uh, Apple iPhone will be completely charged with wireless technology. Technology. So we end up with a situation whereby what can we tell to our consumers? We have a common charger, but the wire technology is out of the market now for your device. Therefore, uh, by 2024, the European Commission has to start um, speaking directly, kickstarting um, the process with standardization authorities to have also a common standard for wireless technology. Why didn't we start immediately with putting out there a standard for wireless technology? Because obviously, USB-C standard is a standard which has evolved over time, which is a solid standard. We are already having very clear indications and clarity when it comes to the leading standard for wireless technology. But for wireless technology, uh, the standard is not developed so much as um, wire technology. But the Commission has to start the process with standardization authorities next year to have a common charger for wireless technology. And that is also a very, very important point. If you look at numbers, only for smartphones. We are producing around every year 11,000 tons of e-waste from these chargers. Now, imagine, and I don't think that we have at hand the correct numbers. If you, have, if you look at the amount of chargers that we throw away every year for all these 14 different categories of products, imagine the number of electronic waste that we will be basically sparing our environment every year. And this is also a very, very important, very important point. So 
basically in a nutshell this is this was what we tried to achieve with this with this with this legislation as alessandro has rightly pointed out although citizens know and are aware that we have legislated in favor of a common charge i think that citizens and consumers <coughs> will appreciate more the effects on the market on their rights on the environment of this common charger when basically they will be given given the option they they're going to be given the option to buy a bundled or an unbundled option to see their traditional uh, brands which put on the market equipment electronic equipment which is compatible with the USB-C so there i think that tangibly our consumers will appreciate more uh, what we have done what we have done during this legislature in a very uh, efficient way because ultimately i think this is also a point that we should and we must appreciate that after 13 years of discussions we have managed to close down this proposal from its inception from when the commission put forward its proposal to its adoption uh, at trialogue and the dis- all the discussions that we had internally in the european parliament at council level so we had we have managed to close down all these complex um, negotiations because here we are not <laughs> we are not looking only at the legislation but we were assessing i don't know how many different types of products to get solid argumentation if they can or they cannot fall under the common charger the, the USB-C standard so it was a very intensive discussion that we had but we managed to close this discussion down and to have a common charger as a new legislation a solid piece of legislation in just six months so um, i think it was uh, a good result we didn't barter uh, speed with ambition because i believe that ultimately we have a very ambitious very solid piece of legislation but at the, t- at the same time we managed to achieve it in in a good time let's put it like that but again i'm all ears um, and i think that this is this is going to be a very fruitful uh, discussion to assess where we are today where we are going and the developments that next year uh, we can we can also witness thanks a lot to you 40 again for this for this opportunity thank you Okay, now it is. Um, European Parliament mysteries every now and then. Um, well, thank you very much, Alex. I think you gave us a, a, a bit of an overview as well of what has led to this to this point. Uh, um, and indeed, I had the 11,000 uh, um, tons of e-waste annually here. Uh, the other data that um, I, I was able to retrieve was that uh, um, on average, uh, in the EU are spent 250 million euros yearly on uh, charger purchases overall, which I think it's an incredible number if you think of, uh, I mean, if you think that we are roughly 400 millions, it means <laughs> that, uh, that a lot of money are really spent on this. Uh, on this, on this. Um, well, great, let's now dive into the conversation. We have an amazing uh, uh, panel uh, and an amazing array of speakers. Uh, starting uh, from my uh, left, I'm very happy to, to welcome uh, Alberto Ruiz Rodriguez, who's the advisor on industry at the Permanent Representation of Spain, uh, which is the upcoming, uh, uh, upcoming uh, uh, presidency of the Council. So we always like to, to, to get ahead, to get a, a head start and, and involve uh, uh, the next presidency. So thank you very much, Alberto, for being here. Um, we have uh, Cinzia Missiroli, Director of Standardization and Digital Solution at CEN and Senelec. Uh, my understanding, but I'm really curious to understand from you what you guys do and why the topic is important, is that uh, you are really working on standardization uh, for the European consumers. So I'm really curious to, to, to hear from you. Well, Alex, of course, you, you've heard from him and you know him very well, our host today. Uh, Cinzia Missiroli. Uh, no, sorry, apologies. I think we have, ah, no, okay, apologies. Chiara Giovannini, Deputy Director General uh, and Senior Manager uh, Policy and Innovation at ANEC, which is the European Consumer Voice in Standardization. Did I say it right? Okay, that's, that's brilliant. Um, and finally, Alexis uh, Baziu, uh, who works uh, at the DigiGrow at the European Commission and is uh, the responsible guy. So we, we managed really to have the person uh, for related to the common charger file. So thank you very much to, to all of you for 
there. Um, before we start the conversation, allow me also to, to thank uh, all the people that made this, uh, this event possible. So starting, of course, from Alex and all our amazing speakers for, for being here, but also to the EU40 uh, team, uh, Sophia and Elori, who are here, who managed the entire uh, back end of the event and allow us to be to be here today. And of course, uh, Alex's team, uh, uh, Elena and Daisy for, for uh, being uh, of so much support. So thank you to, to, to them. Uh, if we are here, it's, it's thanks to them. So now, uh, without further ado, um, Alexis, I would uh, start with you uh, working at the commission and having uh, had the first, uh, let's say, uh, pen marks on a piece of paper when there was uh, the initial uh, thought of drafting this legislation. Um, you know, while you give us your opening uh, remarks, uh, why was it important for the commission to start this, this process? Why was it started 13 years ago? Why did it take 13 years? And how can we manage to regulate something that is changing and growing so fast? I mean, uh, Alex was, uh, was uh, mentioning earlier the, the wireless charging. Indeed, I mean, it's 2023 now. We managed to get charges, USB-C, or, uh, and change it into that. Uh, who tells us that tomorrow morning we don't have to change everything and work on, on, the wireless, uh, uh, on the wireless charger? So Alexis, thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you and thanks uh, every, everyone. And thank you to all, all the speakers also to be, uh, to be here. I'm glad to be part of this, uh, of this uh, uh, forum, I would call it like that. Um, indeed, um, the history, as, as uh, Mr. Agus Saliba already explained, it's, it's, it's a long one. Uh, started in 2009 uh, uh, with a memorandum of understanding from the industry, which lasted um, until 2014. And as already explained, this allowed already to, to reduce down to, to three, uh, three different types of, of, of charging for mobile phones. Uh, at the time, because we were focusing on mobile phones at the time. Um, and following that, um, the industry tried to propose another uh, uh, memorandum of, of understanding, but it was deemed to, well, it was judged to feel short of, of the expectation that, that the Commission had, and I, I think everyone had, as regard to, to the consumers and, and to the environment. So um, um, that's why it wasn't uh, uh, pushed forward, I would, I would say it like that. And, and the commission started already uh, back in 2018 to, uh, to work towards a, a legislative proposal. And thanks again to the parliament, which accelerated the thing with the, uh, uh, with the, um, uh, with the uh, press release, uh, with the, uh, I, I don't remember, it was in 2020, January 2020 that the parliament called for a, a resolution, uh, called for the commission to, to, to act on, on having a common charger, and um, um, which at the end led to, to the, the proposal uh, um, that the, com uh, the commission made in, in, uh, in end of 2021. Um, this long process actually uh, allowed for a bit, I think, and uh, the commission uh, position is that it gives a, it gave a better uh, proposal actually because we were not targeting anymore only mobile phones. Uh, we were uh, uh, also uh, um, reaching for unbundling and, and and savings for 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 the consumers and, and and the environment. So at the end, it's 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 a good proposal. Um, uh, but at the end, it's not also the end of the story. <laughs> As you said, there is a uh, there is challenge ahead. Wireless charging, notably. Um, um, but thanks to this strong proposal, basically, we have well the commission has the tools to act swiftly and rapidly as regards to any change. So uh, there are empowerments. Uh, to change the technical specification, should USB not be the the, the new uh, the best new technology in the future for 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 wired charging, and we have the the, the empowerment also to to act on uh, on wireless charging, introducing the technical specification once uh, once the uh, the technology would be mature enough, uh, because um, as explained by uh, Mr. Agus Saliba, already that this is a technology which is still evolving, and 
the biggest one of the biggest uh, uh, withdraw on the wireless charging is the energy efficiency. You cannot afford, I think, if, if everyone starts charging wireless, wirelessly uh, all, uh, all its devices, you will lose 50% of energy uh, just for the sake of, of charging wirelessly. So that's uh, uh, already an idea which is, uh, which is not, uh, not great, I would say. Um, and um, since you, you already you inquired about, about the, the future, we're already working on the future of the, uh, of the directive, basically. The USB standard has been updated uh, end of last year, so there will be a, a, a delegated regulation uh, by summer of this year to, to update the, the, the reference of the standard in, in the directive. Uh, and that will, this, this update is really important uh, to specifically to cover all laptops uh, uh, that were added to the, to the scope of, uh, of the directive. Um, and on the other end, uh, we are also working on this, uh, on this wireless uh, charging. Um, basically, by end of 2024, we have to issue standardization requests. So uh, uh, we launched uh, a call for tender uh, recently to, to have this study already ongoing and, and, and foreseeing uh, the, um, uh, the steps uh, ahead to be ready uh, for for that deadline. So um, reassuring everybody that uh, this file is is a living file, uh, and 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 thanks to 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 the co-legislator and to the parliament, we have a, a stronger uh, legislation which allows uh, for. Uh, responding to innovation and, and, and possibilities. So that's, uh, that's, I think that's a good summary at first. I think I answered all your questions, but uh, yes, I think... Okay. I'm going to come uh, very shortly uh, on, uh, on another... Okay, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up on those questions uh, after everyone has had the chance to, uh, to, to give a bit of a round of introductions. Um, so... Now I would like to give the floor to, to Cinzia Misiroli, as we said, uh, from SEN and Senelec. First of all, if you can tell us, Cinzia, a bit uh, um, what you do and what's uh, your role. And then uh, I have a question that I would like uh, uh, maybe to, 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 to throw at you and then see well, how, how you react, both to you and to, and to Mrs. Chiara Giovannini. Um, as you can see, the people that are sitting here are not all the people that we've invited to speak because we have had the chance to invite several companies, you know, on the industry side. And uh, I have the feeling, I can allow myself of saying that, I have the feeling that there is a reason why they are not here. And so I would like to ask you if you uh, think there is a specific reason, given the fact that you had a chance to, 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 to uh, have a dialogue with them uh, over over the past uh, few months in the past year for this legislation. So, um, Cinzia, off you go. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, first of all. And indeed, my name is Cinzia Missiroli. I'm the Director of Standardization in SANA and SANALEC, which are two of the three officially recognized standardization organization. When I say officially recognized, it's because there is really um, a legislation in Europe uh, framing the activities of the standardization organization, the third one being ETSI. And as such, since, since uh, 30 years, uh, SAN and SANALEC are really supporting supporting the, uh, the full integration of the internal market by uh, developing European standards, part of which uh, that we call harmonized European standards are really in support of European legislation. And one cited in the official journal in Persis specifically, those standards uh, provide presumption of conformity to the European legislation. It doesn't mean that the other standards do not support the internal market because all our standards actually, as a matter of fact, do. Because whenever we develop a single European standard, this standard is implemented by all our members that are the national standardization bodies, uh, uh, national committees of 34 countries. So we go a bit beyond the European uh, Union and has to implement it, uh, this European solution at national level and have uh, to withdraw their national conflicting standards. This means that you really have one single solution that is applied across 34 countries. Of course, then industry in most of the case will not be the case for this specific piece of legislation. Industry have the choice 
of course, to use our standards is not, but in most of the cases, our standard facilitate also the life of industry um, because they, they help in providing the presumption of conformity and to comply with the, with the, with the legislation, of course, and also remove barriers to trade. Our standards, part of our standards are also developed uh, with our international counterparts that are ISO and IEC. Everyone knows, I guess, ISO 9001, but there is also another international organization covering particularly electrotechnology aspect that is IEC. And why I specifically mention uh, IEC? Because in this case, IEC had the, the lead in developing the standards that are referred to in uh, the specific legislation for, uh, for common charger. Um, however, in Europe as Senelec, we have the possibility to adopt the standards that are developed at international level and make it our own standards. There is again a difference between what's happening at international level at European level. Once you have a standard at international level, there is no obligation of implementation by the standardization organization when there is one a standards become uh, a European standards. And um, in this case, uh, I would like to, to really thank the, the, the commission and the parliament for the amazing work related to the, to the legislation and to using the standards that are already available as the reference documents to comply uh, with the legislation. Of course, for us, um, for, for, for Sana and Sanalek, it's important that we gave industry the possibility to use the solutions or not. In this case, as I said, the, the decision was to make the standard mandatory. But regardless of the voluntary use or the mandatory use of the standard, I think what is important is to allow the use of the latest solutions that are available on the market. And hence, to make sure that the standards represent the state of the arts. And as such, as technology evolves rapidly, standard also evolves, maybe not as rapidly as we wish. They would, but they do. And so it's important that the legislation now in this case really refers to the latest uh, version. As uh, the previous speaker was mentioning, indeed, the standards have evolved since the 2021 version and will evolve worse in future. So it's important and I'm happy to hear that is already happening that we can refer to the latest version of the, of the document. Thank you, Cynthia, uh, for, uh, for your uh, uh, inputs. Uh, Chiara Giovannini, Deputy Director General uh, at ANEC, uh, we can't forget who we are doing all of this for, and uh, you representing uh, the voice of the consumers. I'm really curious to know from, from your side, uh, how do you feel like consumers are going to react to this? And also, if you believe that uh, um, it's going to be like the dichotomy between uh, consumers and producers industry, you know, uh, if it's going to be smooth uh, or if the industry is going to find other ways, you know, to, to continue. I mean, at the end of the day, it's very, it's very understandable that uh, businesses are there to do business. However, we always need to think of the consumers, and this is what we are doing right, right here. So I'm curious to know your, your point of view. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for inviting me to be here on, on behalf of ANEC. Thank you very much to Alex, and thank you very much to you, Forti. Um, as consumers, and as Alex mentioned, since 2009, I've been working on this file. And why is that? Because we had a, a memorandum of understanding. Technically, we had a unified solution, but there was the obligation of having a charger every time you bought a new phone. There was no unbundling. And since then, the unbundling is not really happening on the market. It means that, as uh, Alex mentioned, consumers are used to have everything together in the same package, being the tablet with the charger, the computer with the charger. And we have created an enormous amount of useless or uh, chargers which could be uh, avoided. We need to reverse this trend. This is why we welcome very much the uh, commission proposal. I must say we 
push a lot for this proposal. Uh, we welcome very much that the parliament and, uh, was um, so keen to work and especially uh, the excellent leadership of Alex that uh, really showed the commitment. Um, also the council, the member states, uh, indeed it was quite quick as a legislative process and we can be all very proud uh, about the result. Um, but we have uh, 14 years uh, of uh, um, to change in the sense of what consumers are used to, how they consume. We now need to make a uh, consumer able to uh, do uh, what is good for the environment, what is good for their wallets. Um, but it's going to take time to reverse everything because uh, there is again um, um, a very important marketing that is done for consumer by companies to have the latest uh, product in terms of uh, uh, technology, in terms of fast charging. Uh, and uh, we need to, uh, to give time to consumers to get used to also perhaps using uh, a charger that is not as quick as uh, um, needed. Your grandmother, perhaps she doesn't need to have the fastest, uh, fastest charger. She can charge uh, during the evening, a couple of hours is okay. 30 minutes is not really needed. Um, but she will be tempted to buy the latest charger because uh, in the shop or online, uh, they will tell her, ah, yes, but it's important. So there is really a cultural change in terms of consumption habits that we need to do. Um, and uh, and we, we need really uh, to pay attention to it. Uh, um, we are also very pleased that the legislation that has been approved is a legislation which allows uh, to uh, have a uh, um, updates so that it can really follow the technological development. We support the reference of the new standards and also uh, to have uh, uh, standards for the wireless charging. Uh, indeed, there is a balance to be uh, um, held between the uh, fa this charging itself and then the energy using. Um, um, you mentioned industry. Where is, it, is industry? I must say that all along the legislative process, we didn't see them so much. Uh, is that good? Is that bad? Um, uh, we will see. We will see. Um, sometimes uh, the, uh, the dog that doesn't bark uh, is the most dangerous. Sometimes it's not. We will see. Uh, but indeed, it's one of those files where uh, the, after uh, many years, we didn't see the industry very active. So I'm not surprised they didn't uh, um, uh, accept to come here. Um, there is also another element to be taken into account. There is no consensus among the industry on this file. And so sometimes uh, um, is not a, 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 a very good standing to show a lack of consensus. So that is another explanation to your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know why. Okay, super. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chiara. Apologies uh, for uh, uh, for the introduction. I have already a follow-up question uh, for you. But first, let me give the floor, um, last but not least, to, to Alberto uh, Ruiz Rodriguez from the Permanent Representation of Spain, who actually advises on industry. So maybe you can answer also that question from your point of view. Um, you guys are going to be responsible for leading the council in a short bit uh, and uh, start with the implementation of this most probably. So uh, I wanted to, to take your, your, your two cents, your, your opinion on this and, uh, and give you the floor. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Alessandro. And thank you for inviting me to participate in this uh, forum. Um, I'm very happy to share my views with you. Uh, obviously, I was not involved in the negotiation from the first row because that corresponded to my Slovenian and my French colleagues. But I can tell you my point of view as a representative of the working party in the Council that negotiated this proposal. Um, I can tell you that uh, these was one of the pieces of legislation where you could see that it was very much awaited and whose objectives were shared by everyone. Because in other pieces of legislation, you cannot kind of sense some reluctance from member states or, or several problems that can potentially um, mean obstacles in the negotiations. But in this case, it was not like that. And we could also see that the negotiation was speedy, that uh, everyone wanted to have it in place. And now we have it and we have to do as much as possible to, to bring it forward. Uh, the, the 
this directive, as um, all of us know, and as Alex uh, reminded before, has important benefits both for the environment in terms of reduction of waste and also for the consumers. In the Council, we very much focused on two big issues. One of them is the scope. Obviously, all of us wanted the scope to be as as possible, but we also have to care about the technology, whether it is available on the market or, or not, and also about the acceptance. And uh, one of the important parts of the legislation is that it allows for updates, and we are seeing it, we are um, having the, the standard on or we will have the standard on wireless charging and we will allow laptops of lower power to be included as well in the in the legislation and maybe in the future we will have more and more electronic devices included which is what we can we we all hope also in in terms of consumers because uh, obviously having the same charger to to charge several electronic devices is uh, what we expect Another big point that we cared about in the Council was uh, the consumer side and uh, for us to allow the consumers to make informed choices on the basis of these pictograms and labels and there uh, we were very much uh, interested in knowing the position of the consumer associations and also of uh, the society in general to know which points were important and what type of information should the pictogram and the label include and uh, we are all on the same page and, and we think uh, that we, this will uh, work in the future. Uh, from the council side, uh, we will of course do a, a follow-up of the um, implementation of this legislation and if uh, there is a need to discuss more in depth, uh, we will do, but in general, um, my opinion is that it's a legally sound proposal, it allows for updates, standardization will be key, and Cynthia already reminded us of the latest developments and when it's moving forward. And uh, if, if um, there is uh, something that comes up in the future, we will be ready to take it up and to, uh, to make adjustments. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, now, um, while I give the floor to, to Alex for uh, his first round of, of comments uh, on this, and I also have a question for you, Alex, um, I would like to ask anyone here in the room, if they have any question, please just uh, raise your hand or give me a sign and I will give you the, the, the floor just after to ask to our amazing panelists uh, your, your questions or your doubts. Um, Alex, uh, while you give your uh, remarks uh, after having heard uh, all uh, everyone's opinion. Um, I also would like to ask you an additional question. So now Europe uh, has been leading on a series of uh, files of initiatives in, in the past few years. GDPR is one of them now. Europe has had a very strong legislative, uh, uh, legislative uh, uh, proposal that has been implemented and somewhat has affected also other countries around the world. Uh, I'm thinking specifically of, of the United States. Um, I wonder if you think now that we are kind of pushing towards this standardization, and then of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Misiroli and uh, Mrs. Giovannini, I would like to, to revert that, the same question to you. Do you think we are going to be able to shape, let's say, a word, a new world order, <laughs> some, some would, would call it when it comes to chargers? So, um, Alex, first. I think it's not an issue of just bringing up standards and regulation just for the sake of bringing up standards and regulation. The issue is that, for example, when you look at the digital ecosystem, when you look at rights of consumers offline and online, the biggest issue that we have and we are still facing uh, in Europe today is that we have this divergence of rights between consumers who are buying from tr traditional outlets, from brick and mortar shops, from traditional shops, and those consumers who are buying online. And therefore, it was not an issue that um, the European Commission or uh, the European Parliament wanted to increase bureaucracy, move forward standards, just for the sake of moving forward the regulation. The DSA, the DMA, um, uh, and all the, the, the AI Act that we are working upon right now are all important pieces of legislation to bridge this gap. 
um, to safeguard users' rights, rights uh, of consumers. And this was the same issue uh, with, with the common charger. There were a lot of critics who were telling us, don't do anything because you will be stifling innovation, because you will, um, we are used with, li- with the lightning cable, which is the best cable uh, that we have on the market. And I'm going to go back because this is the, the, the biggest discussion that we are having right now, one year after the approval uh, at, at, at a log level of this, of, this, of this piece of legislation. If truly these big um, brands uh, believe in, um, in, 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 in advancement of technology and giving the best uh, results for their consumers, for their buyers. Why, for example, are we hearing these rumors that uh, Apple wants uh, to reduce charging speed for uh, a standard that they have to incorporate now, whether they like it or not, whether they want or not. Now the standard is there. If they want to target European consumers, if they want their iPhones to, their iPhones, their iPads, their, their equipment to enter in the European market, they have to ad- adopt their devices to our standard. But if we stick up with the argument that, for example, although, again, we didn't have a lot of interaction with these companies during um, uh, during negotiations, they were uh, brushing our questions off. I remember the only contact that we had with um, Apple during the whole negotiations was a visit a delegation of the Internal Market Committee at Silicon Valley. I was part of it, and therefore we had the opportunity to corner a bit um, officials, um, <laughs> people sent by Apple to, to speak to us, to give us a tour at their headquarters, at least to get a glimpse of what they think about this. But but but, but it was a very formal answer, let's put it like that. But if Apple truly believes uh, that the argument that standardization can stifle innovation, then why are they going to restrict charging speed with only chargers that are approved by, by, by their programs? If you want to give the best results to your consumers, and if, you, if not, uh, your true motive is that of selling more proprietary chargers, which cost more for consumers and also cost more for our environment, then... Why are you thinking of making this, this, these, these restrictions to sell um, <coughs> proprietary charging solutions for consumers to have the best charging speed? That is not the best deal that we should and we must give to our consumers. But again, the legislation is there now. Um, it's a living document. Um, also, the argument that if we're going to agree on a standard, this will be cast in stone and therefore new developments would not be taken up and therefore everyone will stop innovating because of this common charger. It's not true. Mm-hmm. Because as the commission has rightly pointed out, although the piece of legislation has not come into force, we are already working on working on upgrading the, the legislation. So it's not true that we are going to lose time. It will, it will, it will, it will hamper um, technological process when it comes uh, to to charging and, and fast charging. So, yes, we have a lot of work in front of us, but um, uh, as, as, as it was said also during a number of interventions, now I think that the most challenging part is to bring this change when it comes to consumer choices. Um, this is the biggest challenge, challenge that we have. Sometimes when we are promoting, when we are also promoting this, this common charger, um, some consumers will um, tell you, but um, I don't agree with this proposal because um, you will be um, taking away our right to have a charger in the box. And not having a charger in the box for me is um, a product which is inferior to the one which has a charger. There are consumer. There was a particular case where a consumer told me uh, that he always made a choice when buying uh, a device to have all the accessories which are there. 
and for him, the choice of brand uh, to choose for his smartphone was that brand which gave him the biggest amount of accessories in the box. This is also a reality. It's a reality maybe with older generation, um, but we need to fight this 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 um, way of way of thinking. And I believe that the elements of <coughs> sorry the element of information, the element of the pictogram. Um, the campaigns that we need to do now, um, uh, I think they are really important because we have to fight off big campaigns that these big tech companies will be moving forward. And advertisement plays a very important role when uh, promoting these products and also when it comes to changing the frame of mind of consumers. Therefore, now, I believe, if you ask me, what is the biggest challenge that you have ahead when it comes to um, getting the most of the, out of the common charger is to change this mentality for consumers. Uh, thank you, Chiara. Um, uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, Chiara, following up on this, uh, uh, I would like to get your reaction uh, on, on consumers' uh, be behaviors. Also, uh, considering that... Um, that uh, I've heard as well the same rumor, uh, you know, that uh, one specific company, Apple, is now reducing, thinking to reduce, um, to make you buy a proprietary, uh, to make you buy a proprietary device uh, or charging device, let's say. How can we avoid that? How can we avoid uh, to risk to have a, a parcelization of uh, instruments and of solutions? And at the end of the day, this is all done to save uh, money, to save uh, the environment, uh, and everyone will provide their own solutions uh, uh, unless, uh, and you will, you will lose as a consumer. Uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day, you will lose as a consumer. How can we avoid it, according to you? As mentioned, we need to change cons consumption patterns. We need to help consumer make the sustainable choice. So it has to be the easiest and the uh, most financially attractive choice. Um, the uh, directive and the legislation contains all those elements. Um, it contains technical uh, specifications that have to be respected. Um, and therefore, uh, especially with the new standard, uh, there will be a specific elements about the speed of charge, which should be respected. They will be mandatory. Um, and also, we have the possibility of studying the market and see how it evolves. The Commission is tasked to see whether um, the uh, um, uh, provisions are far-reaching enough about uh, the um, cables or not. Uh, do we need to change the rules on the unbundling? Uh, make it mandatory or not, uh, in order to see how this market is evolving and how consumers are, are adapting. But don't forget, uh, we have 13 years, 14 years to catch up. So uh, there will be uh, some transition time. Um, and uh, also what we need is to check what the industry is going to do because they are given some uh, um, freedom in the directive about how they inform consumers. Uh, they have a, uh, this is part of what uh, producers and manufacturers always do uh, in, uh, uh, when they put product on the market, they have to inform consumers. And here they also have to inform consumers about the um, technical specificities of the charger, uh, the fact that the charger can be included or not. So we call on member states to step up their market surveillance obligations. And we also call on the commission to put resources on the table for joint actions in terms of checking what needs to be done. Um, so uh, it's part of the overall legislation, but we ask for a, an extra step uh, because we know that it's at the beginning of the entry into force of the new rules. So it will be end uh, next year, but especially 2025. We would like to have very, very intense campaigns of checking uh, on online, in shops, whether uh, the information provided by the companies is correct, even the shape, etc., of the and the colors of the uh, picture etc they can be adapted a little bit so we need to see whether uh, it's not done in a misleading way we hope that the parliament will call on the commission after uh, you know perhaps the new parliament or the old or both 
parliaments uh, they could to call on the commission and the member states to really uh, do a very intensive campaign of market surveillance um, because uh, um, we don't have to forget that at the moment we have a lot of unsafe charger uh, unbranded charger uh, the so-called uh, cheap chargers which can, can, can be dangerous, they can explode, uh, or at least they are at risk of fire. And uh, uh, so market surveillance is always needed, but uh, it's not only about the safety and the technical interoperability, <coughs> it's also about the component of consumer information. This is really what needs to be done um, at the beginning of the entry into force of the new rules. Thank you, Chiara. Uh, Cinzia, I'll give just uh, um, Alexis and Alberto the chance to respond to this and then I'll give you the floor. Uh, Alexis, you've been uh, <laughs> like uh, cold, let's say, to the stand. No, jokes aside, uh, of course, the implementation of it is going to be a huge part. Uh, um, while you have wrote uh, the legislation, uh, like uh, you have co wrote the legislation as the European Commission. How can we make sure that this is going to be implemented? Is it something for the Commission? Is it something for the Council mostly? Is it member states that have to deal with it? Uh, how do you see this? Well, um, the first thing is that market surveillance is the, uh, the, the it's, it's in the hands of the member states. So uh, uh, as, uh, as Chiara said, us as the Commission, we have tools as, uh, as joint actions, uh, uh, coordinated action uh, on, on, on safety of products also, uh, which, which are uh, basically targeted an analysis of specific products uh, that enters the, the market. And among, among that, I think it was even last year that w one specific coordinated activity was led on, on USB charger. So as they stand now, obviously, but uh, uh, so, so th there are already ongoing, uh, ongoing activities on that, but we will for sure uh, 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 take into account the, the situation as regards to the common charger uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the next program for, for these joint actions. Thank you. Um... you know, uh, Alberto, sorry. Alberto, um, same question to you. Now the ball is, is in uh, your hands. And um, we have also a question online, I'm told, so I will throw it at you and then any, anyone who wants to respond as well can, can take it. Uh, so we said that the legislation will greatly benefit the environment, uh, as uh, Mr. Agus Saliba, Agus Saliba uh, mentioned. Um, but what about, uh, uh, what about secondhand uh, uh, market? What about the old phones? How are we going to deal with that? If now, for example, an, an, an Apple phone that has the old Thunderbolt, how, how will we deal with it? Alberto, first. Yes, thank you very much. Well, from the market surveillance side, it's very interesting all the um, thoughts that we've been putting on, on the table. Um, obviously, we have to adapt to the legislation and market surveillance authorities from member states will do our best to adapt. But uh, we also have to, to take into account that we have limited resources and that it's a national competence. So uh, we will, on our side, uh, do the best to um, ensure a good implementation of the legislation. And in this regard, there are also um, programs uh, from the Commission. For instance, there is the single market program, as you know, that has a, a part on market surveillance, and they also help um, market uh, help to promote market surveillance. And this is one um, piece of legislation where um, improving the market surveillance is, is needed, obviously. Uh, it's something that we are taking into account, but of course uh, it was just uh, adopted a, a few months ago and we have to see how we can manage. In terms of, of regulation, obviously this is not in the hands of member states right now. It's uh, something that we have to see. The commission has to make proposals and then uh, we'll see if uh, it stays within the, the commission empowerment or if, if it's also up to the co-legislators to, to do something on it. Um, and then with regard secondhand, and this question that was uh, raised online, my, my impression, but it's, it's only my impression and, and my opinion is that 
it's not so much up to this legislation to to have an action on on this. There are other pieces of legislation that already take care of of waste as, in terms of secondhand products, and we have to concentrate on that. Uh, for instance, there is a a very important piece of legislation that is currently being negotiated, which is the eco design regulation, and 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 also the waste um, packaging and and all the waste framework uh, directive and the legislation that is uh, derived from that from there that uh, take care of, uh, of waste. So uh, we, we need to ensure coherence between all the, the pieces of legislation that we already have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alberto. Thank you very much, Alberto. Um, Cinzia, I let you answer to all the inputs that have uh, arrived. Uh, there is also a question, another question that arrived online. Um, this is a bit uh, touching it slightly, let's say. They say now you focused uh, on, we focused on, uh, on uh, the chargers for, for phones. Uh, it's not only limited to phones, we remember. Uh, it's, it's also about, uh, about uh, other devices as well. Um, what about plugs? Because if you go to the uh, Ireland, just, just going to Ireland, so European Union, I don't know in Malta, actually, if you have the same, uh, uh, you know, it's very complicated. So, so is it something that we will need to touch as well? Because it's... Um, it's also true. It might be useless to have, you know, a common charger, but then having the charger itself that will have thousands of different uh, uh, things to implement. Yes. Well, uh, I would say that this is one of the most sensitive subjects uh, related to standardization, uh, the, having the same plugs. Uh, this is something that has been developed and discussed uh, well, uh, <laughs> in many years, many years, and since uh, and still. Um, it's as I mentioned, we we is very sensitive and we are not yet there. Uh, there is also this aspect that um, we are not yet there. Yeah, no, exactly. But and is also one of the the key top uh, key aspect about standardization is one of the words that Chiara used earlier on uh, that is consensus, and we really try to find a common uh, solutions among the the different players and different stakeholders. I'm not talking about only industry. Yes, industry of course play a big role when it comes to the standardization, standardization words. But of course, we also try to, well, we consider also the, the voice of uh, societal stakeholders, small and medium enterprises, academia, et cetera. And we really, and this consensual, consensual exercise might take longer than uh, people actually wish. And of course, there is when it comes to, to the plugs, it's course, of course, that something that also goes beyond what uh, industry wishes and uh, the, the possibility of, uh, of industry. Um, uh, something else that I wanted to, to address is uh, the, the, the position of one of the industries that you referred on, that uh, uh, standardization stifle uh, innovation. And while our, one of our speakers' points always is that standardization support innovation by facilitating the deployment of innovative solution to the market. So I would not agree to the, the, to the position of that uh, particular <laughs> companies, even if we can understand why in this case they were uh, not, uh, not in favor of standardization. But I said, for me, what is important and for us as NSM, like what is important is that if we have a new standards on the market, there is the possibility to update the legislation quickly. And this is something that is happening. And so I think this is something that uh, we need to keep on working with the, with the European Commission in order to make that, uh, that happen again. For these specific um, uh, standards, we are talking about international standards. And the companies that were involved in those standards, of, of course, are global companies. And uh, in any case, there is always the possibility, if there is a need, to adapt the international standards to European needs. If, for whatever reason in future, we need to have specific uh, European solutions, even if, of course, our primary objective is to have whenever possible global, uh, global solution. And there is also the possibility for European industry to drive the work that is happening at international level drive because there is an industry need, drive because there is a policy need that pushes industry towards to go towards a specific direction. But then there is also the possibility for us to bring those solutions at international level for, uh, for being adopted as uh, one single solution uh, globally. And I think much. that's uh, is it. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, Cinzia. I wonder if there is any question in the room before we allow our speakers to go for the closing remarks. No inputs. Okay. So, um, Alex, I'll keep you last so that you wrap up uh, everything that we have discussed. Um, just a point on the standardization of plugs. Uh, by the way, uh, we have someone that has fought uh, against the big techs for this charger. Now maybe you can char you can fight uh, for us as well to have the same plugs all over Europe. That would be <laughs> also an interesting point when. Um, uh, we were pushing forward the French presidency uh, to try to conclude um, uh, as efficiently as possible under the French presidency um, this, this proposal. One of the biggest discussions, in fact, at council level was dealing with the pictogram and how, basically, so with the common, with the common charger proposal, with the revision of the radio equipment directive, Two of the most important, one of the most important elements is the element of information. So now when you are buying a new phone on the box, you should have this pictogram, this label with uh, minimum information, for example, on whether the charger is there or not, and the maximum and minimum um, uh, powerment characteristics of, 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 that, of that charger. One of the biggest discussions that we had, that there was, that there were, at council level was how to basically um, uh, design this plug. If we're going to design the UK plug or uh, the other plug used used everywhere. And there were member states who were really pushy uh, on this point. Very small point, but again, we're fighting for a pictogram and how we depict a pictogram. Now imagine, that is why, um, I agree. I agree uh, totally with with Chiara that this can also be very complex and very complicated. Although it cannot be done with the radio equipment directive, I think when it comes to plugs, uh, we can do it. But the commission can correct me if I'm wrong with the eco design. No fault no directive. So um, uh, it's very ambitious. I think it makes sense. Although I'm coming from a country which. Uh, uses still uses the uh, UK plugs since since we were a colony for 200 years, so uh, I think it makes sense uh, to have a standard also when it comes to to plugs. It would be like less complex for us also to use adapters with each and every other plug coming from the single market, except from Ireland and Cyprus, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, as I said in the beginning, there are two challenges here. One of them is the scope. So uh, the more, the better, in, in our opinion. So if we can extend these to more devices that are ready to adapt the new standard, uh, it will be more beneficial for everyone. And then the second one is the, the one Alex just mentioned, the information to consumers. For that, um, our point is to, uh, to gather input from all the experts in the field. So of, of course, consumer associations are important. Member states, uh, we also want to have a say in that. And that's why one of the discussions we were having in the council is whether to bring this to the expert groups so they could decide uh, through an, an implementing act how to design the, the label or the pictogram because this is very, uh, it's, it's very tricky. In any case, um, there we are in the hands of, of people who know, consumer associations have a, a big say, and uh, as long as it's not confusing and it works all over Europe, then we would be happy with that. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Permanent uh, uh, representation, always great to have, uh, to have uh, your perspective. So again, thank you. Um, Chiara, um, Final remarks, uh, uh, if you could uh, also stress uh, a tiny bit uh, on uh, um, second life for uh, phones that, uh, that, were, uh, um, that are in the past now, because we got another question right now on that. As I mentioned, we, um, we are going to change the market. It means that there is a transition 
and uh, uh, some products of the past will not comply anymore. This is part of all uh, sustainability policy. There is a transition period, there is a change in the market, and uh, it's inevitable that uh, um, some products won't be uh, uh, available anymore. Um, the uh, concept of refurbishing uh, circular economy um, has some limits to it. Uh, sustainability policy is made not only of debt, uh, and again, um, considering the lifespan of those products, we don't think this is going to be an enormous problem. Of course, there are business models which are built on this specific uh, aspect. That might be uh, a problem, I don't deny it. Um, but again, we are looking at a bigger market uh, with uh, a lot of charges for a lot of products. We would like even to uh, expand the list of the products. Uh, so the commission will also have to assess uh, how to um, uh, expand Annex 1 uh, of the uh, uh, directive uh, to have uh, um, electronic toys, for example, uh, personal care devices, um, the do-it-yourself, the rechargeable ones, although technically uh, when the water is in, um, in the environment, the charging uh, with the USB um, charger might be different, so we need to find other solutions, but still uh, we think that there is scope to um, extend the scope of the uh, of the application of the legislation uh, but again we we, we are in in in, uh, in presence of a market which did not deliver for consumers the uh, legislators had to intervene had to make rules mandatory to make standards mandatory we are changing this market we are changing consumer habits it's going to take time and not everyone is going to be happy about it So, in a democratic in a democratic process, the co-legislators have decided in that direction. Fantastic. Thank you. Vannini, um, uh, Deputy Director General at ANEC, uh, much appreciated for you to be, to be here with us. Uh, um, Alexis, uh, let's go uh, to you. Final remarks. Uh, now it's almost off of your table, you know, the legislation has been drafted, but what's coming up uh, next, uh, I'm curious to, to know. Yeah, it's it's off my table, but also in because uh, the, lots of lots of uh, empowerments uh, uh, on this directive, and 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 uh, and we have the work as I explained already. We have uh, we will start the work on on the harmonization of of wireless charging. So requesting uh, a study as regard to what are the developments on the technology. We already had a study back in 2021, but you know this this study uh, uh, these technologies evolve fast and and. More specifically, we will emphasize on on, on energy efficiency, which I, which I mentioned is a, it's a real uh, I would say a, a blocking point in in regard this this technology. Uh, in parallel, we are already also working on the extension of the scope, which uh, Chiara mentioned. We we already launched a study uh, this year. the The extension of the scope is due by. Uh, 2025 end of 2025 if i'm not mistaken so uh, so we're already working on that because we will have to to perform an impact assessment report to the council and the parliament so um uh, lots of work ongoing afterwards we will have the the as also uh, kira mentioned we will have the review for the unbundling clause whether we we have to include the cable whether we uh, have to make it mandatory so this is a, a living file uh, definitely and I will come back also maybe, I, I will take the opportunity to come back maybe also on, on some on some points as regard to technical specification. USB standards were developed by, uh, as Sincha as mentioned, by the industry basically. And some of the companies that are making trouble, they are in, in, in those, uh, in those <laughs> forums developing those standards. So it's a bit of a uh, of, uh, two-way game from, from, from some uh, from some players, I would I would call it like that, and recalling also that we are not targeting. Uh, also, it seems like we are targeting a specific company uh, with this legislation, but that's not the case. We have several devices. Uh, we have also uh, uh, we are harmonizing a solution where we still have currently three uh, uh, three connectors on the market. So. That's also uh, uh, not only for this specific manufacturer uh, uh, a new way of thinking, but for other manufacturers uh, a new way of thinking. We are also 
with this opportunity, opportunity kind of refraining any new company to develop a, a proprietary charging solution, we, which will create, again, market fragmentation, which will lead to the problems that we had. And so uh, that's a bit to, 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 to add to the context uh, uh, of this. Um, and I will close by uh, briefly speaking on the harmoni harmonization of plugs and sockets, because it's also one of my five, it's the LVD. So um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, 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 a discussion that has been ongoing for years. I, I, I'm not that here for years, but I know that it has been ongoing for years. Mm -hmm. and, and the last reports were that it, it puts a lot, harmonizing it for the moment puts a lot of stress on everyone, for con, on consumers and also on the industry as regards to changes and, and uh, changes in infra infrastructure, products, etc. So um, it's, it's not an easy task, uh, but happy to discuss it in the future, of course. <laughs> Uh, when the file is on the on the table, um, thank you very much, Alexis uh, Basiu from the European Commission at DigiGrow, now also responsible for uh, plugging and uh, and plugs. Um, Cinzia, uh, Missiroli, I'll uh, leave you the final word before uh, uh, giving it to to Alex as well. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, tell us uh, what uh, what's your take after all this. Yes, yes, thank you very much. And as a matter of fact, I wanted also to address the, the waste aspect because uh, as a matter of fact, uh, might, uh, might not be aware, as, as I said, standards are a silent uh, companion of all every day's uh, uh, of our lives in every day, but people are not aware. And as a matter of fact, uh, there are already, already quite a number of standardized solutions in support of the waste and uh, waste of electronic equipment directive, the eco design. So there are already solutions that are on the market and that every day are uh, standards that are being uh, delivered. Um, and uh, um, my last few words is that, as I said, we are happy that we could, uh, the, the, the Commission and the legislators have agreed on, uh, on the fact that there are two already standards available that could meet the, the requirements of the legislation. Let's keep on working together in order to, to keep those uh, updated and updated in the legislation, but most, most importantly for standardizers and legislation to really work hands in hands um, in order to make sure that whenever there is a need for a standards, we are informed from the beginning of the discussion in order for us and for, the, for, uh, for all our stakeholders to be able to deliver the expected solution in time. So happy to discuss with the Commission, with the Parliament, so whenever there is this need, and especially when it comes to wireless uh, solutions. And uh, as I said, let's start the discussion as soon as possible and not wait uh, to the last minute. Thank you very much. Thank you again, uh, uh, Cinzia Missiroli from Sen and Senelec. Uh, um, so uh, that's about uh, it for today. I'll give the floor to Alex for the final remarks on my side. Uh, thanks again to all the speakers for being here, for Alex uh, Ajus Aliba, member of the European Parliament and Rapporteur on the File, for hosting this, uh, this great event, uh, to U40 for, uh, for helping in the organization and organizing this, to everyone who's uh, here in, in presence and to the 31 uh, people that uh, listen to us online and for the questions that arrive. So uh, thanks again. And uh, Alex, uh, final words. So first of all, thanks, Alessandro, U40, and uh, also all uh, the speakers from standardization authorities, consumer, um, uh, consumer organization, and also from Council, uh, I think I think uh, as as I said, um, this is a very important piece of legislation because ultimately here we are touching the way of life of our consumers, the quality of life of, of our consumers. But also, today we spoke a lot about standards, about um, industries, but here we are in a very tangible way in which consumers can feel that they are contributing to something positive for our environment because we speak a lot about uh, climate change, about sustainability when it comes um, to waste. But here we are moving forward something which is creating so much electronic, useless electronic waste. Uh, and I want to close upon this point. From the impact assessment of the commission, 
one in every three chargers that are being bundled with one of these products that we are using, that they, that they are targeted directly by this legislation, we don't even open it from its packaging. So uh, now we're not speaking about chargers who which we use occasionally. We are also speaking about chargers which we never open from its packaging. So I think it was high time after after 13 years of these voluntary agreements uh, between industries to have something tangible, to have a living piece of legislation. Because as the commission has rightly pointed out, the commission has a lot of work to do because the um, revision of the radio equipment directive is full of different timelines, different impact assessments, um, different updates that the commission has to propose, um, uh, consultation with standardization bodies. So from the scope um, to the issue of uh, how to unbundle more, uh, these are all questions that we are going to answer uh, during these upcoming um, years. So um, it's already a very good legislation, but I believe that with time, with the passing of time, this legislation, which will, will be much stronger and much more relevant to our environment and also to our consumers.